Hi YouTube, in this problem we're going to compute the line integral of this vector field uh, over this curve C here. Solution. The first thing to do is rewrite our line integral. So by definition, this is equal to the definite integral from A to B of F of our vector field and it's X of T comma Y of T dot r prime of t dt. So this is the definition of the line integral. So in this problem, our x of t is cosine of 4t. And our y of t, sorry, is 4 cosine of t. And our y of t is 4 sine of t. So x prime, in this case, is simply negative 4 sine t. Right? The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And y prime of t is 4 cosine t. So r prime of t, and I guess I should put the little arrow there to be perfect, is negative 4 sine t i hat plus 4 cosine t j hat. Right? You just differentiate each little piece. So this is equal to a here is 0, b is pi over 2, so we're going from 0 to pi over 2, and then f, and now we can plug in our x. x was 4 cosine t, and then y was 4 sine t. And then dot, our derivative, so our derivative here was negative 4 sine t i hat plus 4 cosine t j hat dt. All right, the next step maybe is to plug in 4 cosine t and 4 sine t into our vector field. So this is the x here, and this is the y. So it will be definite integral from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, And then we have x squared, so it'll be, I'm going to use two parentheses here, parentheses here, so parentheses, parentheses, 4 cosine t squared i hat plus, and then y is 4 sine t, so 4 sine t, and I'll put this in parentheses for clarity, j hat, dot, so all of this, all this piece here is just this piece here, right, we just took the 4 cosine t and we put it where the x was, we took the 4 sine t, we put it where the y was. Dot, all of this stuff over here, so I'll write it again. This is negative 4 sine t i hat. It's really easy to mess up in these problems, so just be careful. A lot of notation. Once you get through the notation, it's not so bad. All right, now we have to take the dot product of these two vectors. So this is equal to the definite integral from 0 to pi over 2. So for the dot product, you multiply the corresponding entries, right? So it'd be this times this, okay? So we have 4 squared here, okay, because it's being squared. Then here we have a negative 4. So 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, and it's negative. So it's negative 64 cosine squared t sine t. And then we're taking this times this, so plus... 16, oh, yes, yeah, 16, sine t, cosine t. Let me just check that, so dt, let's make sure we did it right. So let's see, we took this, and we multiplied it by this, right? So we had a 4 squared, so that's 16, and then times negative 4, that's going to be negative 64, cosine squared, t sine t, looks good. Then we took this, and we multiplied it by this. So, yep, 16. So everything looks okay. So we have this definite integral we have to deal with. So let's break it up. So this is equal to 0 to pi over 2. So here, for this first piece here, um, the way to do this integral, well, let me think here. So we could break it up and do it as two integrals, or we could do it um, as one. For example, we could factor out a sine t. Let's do that. Let's pull out uh, a sine t. Let's try it. So this will be, you can also pull out a negative 16. So negative 16 sine t. 
my initial instinct was to break it up and do it as two integrals. But I think since we have a common factor of sine, I'm thinking we can pull out the sine and let u be cosine. Let's, let's see what happens. So we'll pull out a negative 16. So this is going to be 4 cosine squared t. And this should be minus cosine t dt. Right? And then negative, let's check negative, and negative is positive. Yep, looks okay. All right, good stuff. So now we can let u be cosine t so that du is negative sine t dt. That worked out really nice. And now we also have to change the limits of integration, right? So whenever you make a u sub and you have limits of integration, you're supposed to change them. So let's see. So when t is equal to 0, u is equal to the cosine of 0, and cosine of 0 is 1. And then when t is equal to pi over 2, u is equal to the cosine of pi over 2, and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. All right, so let's go ahead and change our limits. So when t is 0, we said u was 1. So this is going to become a 1. When t is pi over 2, u is 0. So this is a 0. Okay. Our negative sine t dt is just our du. Okay. That's going to be our du. So, um, so du is going to absorb the negative. So I'll put the du here. We'll still have the 16. Okay, we'll still have the 16. So again, this piece here, this negative and this sine t and this dt, that's precisely du. So that's the only thing we've substituted. And the 16 hung out, and I put it here. What's left is the cosine stuff. So it's parentheses 4u squared minus u. All right. So now we can integrate this. This is 16. When you integrate u here, use the power rule, right? So you get 4 u cubed over 3, so 4 thirds u cubed minus u squared over 2. And we're going from 1 to 0. Okay. So first we plug in 0. So it would be 16 bracket 0 minus 0. It's all 0. Life is good. Minus 16. And now we plug in 1. So it's 4 thirds. Right, plugging in 1, minus 1 half. 16 times 0 is 0, so we get minus 16. And we have 4 thirds minus 1 half. So you can multiply this by 2 over 2 and multiply this by 3 over 3 to get a common denominator. So it's 8 over 6 minus 3 over 6. This is negative 16. And then 8 minus 3 is 5, so we get 5 over 6. And we can simplify this. Um, looks like 2 goes into 16 8 times. So you get negative 8 times 5 over 3, right? 2 goes into 6 3 times. So you end up with negative 40 over 3, and that's the line integral. Kind of a tough problem. I didn't expect it to be uh, this difficult. Uh, I hadn't worked it out before making the video. I think when you get here, you really have to think a little bit. My initial idea was to break this up into two integrals and do it that way. You could have certainly done it that way. But then I thought, hey, maybe we can pull out a sign and just make a U sub. So I hope this video was helpful. That's it.